both appealing for peace or were they praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the carry on drive. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you, what do you have to say about that, guys? Well, I think that the Jews are Morning, afternoon, evening, and welcome to the first of the Views on the News shows in 2024. Happy New Year. So we have our usual panel of regulars. Guy Otten from Manchester. Hello. Welcome, welcome Guy. And Tercia Duplessis from South Africa. Welcome, Tercia. You're Thank looking very... You. You're looking very summery while we're shivering here. <laughs> so it's a slightly different sort of show this week because there wasn't a great deal of news in the last seven days, although I could, I could go back into the previous week because we didn't have one in the uh, festive season. But what I've done is I've prepared a lot of little video clips that I think you'll find interesting. Some of them are quite weird, typically religious weirdness. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to focus too much on the news. I'm just going to mention it, that, uh, for example, there was a two-bomb attack in Kerman in southern Iran in which 84 people were killed and many more were wounded. And this is the Islamic State group that carried it out there was a suicide bomber and so it, this is a muslim on muslim attack there you go meanwhile in uh, nigeria muslims massacred about 223 christians and injured more than 500 people in and around catholic churches chanting aluha akbar on christmas day there is no, there is no day that's not included in this nonsense. What do you think? And, and I presume they planned it for Christmas Day, because uh, mm. uh, that they knew that's when people would be attending church and they could yeah. do the most, most yeah. damage. Um, mm. And as uh, I've often said, this the people who are killed that's horrific but there are more than 500 people wounded yeah or injured and those people nobody talks about them they, they there's probably permanent people who will suffer from those injuries for the remainder of their lives if they don't pass on because mm. of poor health care and other things that are prevalent yeah. in Africa. So nobody mentions those people the, the more than 500 who, yes. whose lives yes. are ruined forever and, and yes. they're not dead. They have to live with what happened. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting about the Iranian um, incident is that uh, IS, of course, are Sunni, whereas the Iranians are Shia. And so there's yes. that element of sectarian strife yes. there, as mm. well as a political struggle because the um, Iranians have now got a lot of influence maybe even control in iraq mm. but, yes. the, um, uh, but the 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 is obviously they they are they are trying to struggle and get that back because they had uh, a, a good position from their point of view in their mm. little islamic state in iraq mm. um and they they want to try and you know recover i suppose some of their malign influence that's that one but as far as the the christians and and, and the nigerian situation there's there's been a lot of internecine killings yeah. for years there and it yes. hardly ever reaches the uh the western press it's i mean that's that's right. that, that 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 incident has, has hardly been mentioned it's certainly not on the new on the mainstream news i've i've heard about that's it right. but um not yes. you know um, and, and I and I also understand that it followed an earlier incident in which some Muslims were killed in yes. early December. So I don't yes. know whether it's tit for tat or what is going on there, but it's yeah. it, it's bad news. Now, one interesting 
that positive thing is that in in Rochdale, where I am in Manchester, um, I'm I'm working with a charity run by um, Niger Nigerians, you know, who live in Rochdale. They're sort of British Nigerians, mm. and their volunteers include devout Christians and wait for it, yeah, some Muslim Nigerians. Mm. So, so it is possible for these people to work together. You know, they're, they're, these are brilliant volunteers. Yes. Um, so maybe there is hope. Are they are they all from Nigeria? These um, volunteers, or are, yeah, are they? Yeah. Is it, so, so I was telling John uh, that um, this um, uh, charity um, that I'm involved in, uh, supporting asylum seekers and refugees in uh, in Rochdale. Um, has been uh, has been run by an increasingly elderly bunch of volunteers, and we've brought in this younger. Mm. They're Nigerians essentially, and they're brilliant. Um, and uh, yes, they they are British Nigerians. They've been here. Some of them have been born here, you know, but yeah. others have been here for a long, long time. Yeah. And are fully settled, and most of them will be British uh, citizens. Let's hope they don't get poisoned by fundamentalism. Well, yes, of course. But what's interesting is is that it's taken them, all of them, to go to the UK to learn to work together. In their own country, it seems that there's numbers of people of these different faiths who just struggle to get along. I just want to ask if it's... No, no I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have seen that. No. I, I think it may well be that there are plenty of people who are working together in Nigeria. In Nigeria as well. Okay, that's good. I, I, don't, that's good. I don't know. Uh, okay. the answer to that. All we do know is that in the north of Nigeria, there is this battle between Muslims yes. and Christians. Yes. Um, why, why do you think... Is, is it just colonialism or, or imperialist mindset that, that or too much happening on international stage on the international stage that that massacres like this one that in Nigeria doesn't even um, uh, get mentioned on the mainstream news in in the uh, oh. it, it is, oh, is that interesting one I don't know yeah well that's 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 what global atheist news is for picking up yeah. all these things that yeah. slip through the filter of the mainstream news which of course yeah. is focused on the interests of its audience which in western europe or, or you yeah. know the, the west is about things going on in the us england and europe. the uk and europe and even even as far away as australia more than you know we see more about floods in australia for example than we ever see about things going on in Africa. Yeah. yeah. That's why you have me. Yeah, yes, that's right. right. <laughs> we're, so, we're so lucky to have you. So going to <laughs> Europe, going to Europe, uh, the Danish, they've been having a spout of Quran burnings. Okay. So what have they done? They've come up with a law to ban Quran burning. And there are some of us who think that this is like blasphemy. What they're doing here now is supporting the concept of offending a God, which has taken, you know, very many years to try and get rid of from all of the European laws. And now they're letting it back in. You can't do that because it's blasphemy. Is that what they is that the reason that's given, though? I, no, I, it's not the reason. Not the reason that's given. They no. say it's because it causes uh, civil unrest. But the, yeah, I mean, I think that's the issue. It's, it's the unrest problem. But I mean, I'm I'm against burning any kind of books, even uh, bad ones like what I believe the Quran to be. Um, but um, yes, and 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 we have the same problem in, in the UK. The, the old blasphemy sort of type thinking is still there in the in the in, in our case we have a law of aggravated public disorder sort of um, a breach of the peace kind of things and and that can be aggravated by allegedly religious hate or hatred or something and that in a sense that kind of in through the back door brings back some yes. some um, restrictions on freedom of speech yes yes the, the problem here is they haven't restricted burning the Bible or, you know, the other religious uh, books. So 
it is very much uh, pandering to the Islamic faith. Mm. Well, uh, it's interesting that 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 this is a topic because um, I told you before the show started about the slight upheaval at the southern tip of Africa about. Mm. Well, in my opinion, the abuse of our national broadcaster in uh, on South African radio. But now, um, th there was a conversation on one of the Facebook groups where the person who wrote the article that was in today's newspaper had he hosted a radio show in Afrikaans. Uh, it was called "From a Different Perspective." It was about religion, but he is a fairly outspoken atheist and there was actually a complaint lodged against him without like an ombudsman of blasphemy and mm. uh, fortunately he he wasn't uh, convicted but mm. it's interesting that this idea of of blasphemy is still mm. very much alive and well in yeah. in more places than than Denmark but I just want to ask you especially Guy being a lawyer I I'm very conflicted about a, a law like this ban on burning the Quran, because on the one hand, I can absolutely see that what you say is right, John, that why only burning the Quran? But are there instances of Muslims burning the Bible? Um, I, I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I differ from Guy here, because my view is that the only criterion that should be considered over the burning of a book is whether it's being done by the owner. <laughs> I think it's perfectly legitimate to burn your own books if you want to. You see, it's the context here. Why are you burning this book? If you need fuel for a fire, that's fine. But if you're burning it as some sort of expression of, of prohibition about some belief system that you don't like, that isn't fine. But but then yeah. again, I I can perfectly imagine a bunch of um, neo Nazi skinheads burning a Quran for reasons that none of us on this panel would agree with, and and th that's the conflict that I have, because yeah. I think the mentality that one needs to have to burn any book is you. What are you trying to communicate with that, and? So, so I'm, I'm making it very clear. I'm, I'm very conflicted about this. It's something that occupies yeah. my mind quite a bit. Okay, so we'll we'll leave you thinking about that. We'll keep you wait, awake tonight. Right, guy. <laughs> next time, when we have our chat about uh, free will, you can we, we can we can. Okay, yeah, we can delve into free will. I mean, that's another big. Anyway, go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to do that another day. Yeah. So nearby where you are, guy, in Oldham, Oldham just down yeah. the road. Yeah, there's something going on called Dumb and Dua. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to show you a video and I want you to listen to the cries of the children. <laughs> Thank 
What is that all about? He's obviously using an echo effect, but mm. why is he making these scary noises? It, yeah, it, I, I'm trying to look it up now, and I can't, and I can't get anything out of it. It's an Islamic well, what, invocation, and well, well, the, the, the steam. That's what I found, and and the dua is like an incantation to uh, calm anxiety. So it must be something like um, maybe something similar to the om uh, and i bet you there'll be somebody online who explain to you that this has to do with a frequency that god uses to communicate and to calm the mind but those noises are uh, scary how does, scary how does he do that i'd like it's, to know how, how he does that but well, the, the, he's using an echo machine an echo effect on the microphone okay so it's it's in incantations i think guy that's doom doom i just get cooking in steam and when i type in dumb and dua i just get dumb and dumber which i <laughs> find close parallels to when you have a bunch of people um but but it must be i, I can imagagine little ones screaming because yes, it, must, yes. it, it must be painful i can't imagine it's good for the hearing um Ooh, to be exposed right. to that. It says here that uh, du'a is essentially submission to God and a manifestation of a person's need for Allah. Um, so, I mean, it sounds like a sort of Islamic mantra, um, mm. doesn't it? it? Which is bizarre. I've, I've never come across it before. Um, and, and it's kind of got a hypnotic quality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it, if children are listening to it and are being affected by it as, as appears by their screams, Yes. then uh, so, some others will be taking it on board and internalizing something quite yeah. um, problematic, I think. And the size of the crowd. I, I yeah. was going to comment on that. It it seems to me almost as if there's an element of a type of mass, it's not called mass hysteria anymore, that's an old-fashioned yeah. terminology, yeah. but there's definitely mm. an element of uh, uh, hip, uh, crowd crowd hypnosis it's it's as mm. if uh, and we, we we are in in psychology and in neurology we are well familiar with the effect of sound and sound waves on mm. on the human brain and to have this collective and you have these thousands of but they look like Sikhs to me the head yes, I when they see yes. I, it's I, funny I, you should I, mention that I, I i wondered whether they were ahmadis uh -huh. oh, yeah. like that. Oh. Very to our western ears yeah mm. I, I wonder if there's any relation guy you might know to um the the, the dervishes maybe that's another yes. branch yeah, yeah. of islam where, where you sort of go into a trance-like state yeah yeah, yeah. yes yeah. No, i think that's a, actually, i think that's we're, right we're, it's similar isn't yeah. it it's yeah we're coming on we're coming on to that it, it's sort of a, a stimulation like an om a repetition trying to transify you and, and there's a i've got another little clip about that I later can, on yeah I, I can see the future yes <laughs> so you'll also be pleased to hear that um most of christmas was halal take a look <laughs> This is a reminder that celebrating Christmas is not halal, putting up a Christmas tree is not halal, wishing people a happy Christmas or a merry Christmas is not halal, 
putting up red, white, and green lights or clothing or decoration is not halal. Attending Christmas parties is also not halal. Giving people gifts or presents on Christmas is also not halal. Drinking eggnog is actually halal unless you're doing it to imitate the non-Muslims. The reason for all of this is that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَن تَشَبَّهَ بِقَوْمٍ فَهُوَ مِنْهُمْ That whoever imitates a people, then he is one of them. So as a Muslim, you should be confident in your religion. Be proud that you are a Muslim. Don't try to be someone that you are not. There you go. I wonder if Turkey is halal or haram. Well, no, no, no. well, well, well you, did you hear him? He, sa- he didn't say it was haram. He said it's not yes. halal. Not halal. Yes. So, there's, so there are three categories. There's ha- yes. halal and haram. And then there's an intermediate category, which is neither one or the other. You're allowed to do it, but you're not encouraged. So, yes. so that's Christmas. Christmas is sort of in the middle. Christmas is yes, neither halal nor haram, but it, but, but yeah. Well, something that I can I don't know about the UK, but in South Africa there was a there's every year there's a big debate amongst Christians whether or not to celebrate Christmas because. Oh. A, in the evangelical fundamentalist um, branch, there is a strong um, cohort of believers who are very much against Christmas because, firstly, we don't know when Jesus was born. There is no um, uh, order in the Bible to no no command to sac- uh, to, to celebrate the birth, and yeah. the, the uh, and there is also the story that the um, the tree is of pagan origin and that actually the festival refers back to Saturnalia and and there's actually Christians who feel so strongly about it and I we never had a Christmas in the traditional sense because the the faith that I was brought up in was of not that conservative it wasn't seen as wrong to have a Christmas tree and it wasn't seen as it was sort of like the Muslims like this not halal not haram sort of in the middle yeah. if you could you'd rather not celebrate Christmas with a tree and lights because that's just too much fun you know and uh, we, we try to we try yeah, to avoid it, that's right we, we've had the same puritan tradition in our yeah. history in the uk and uh, fortunately i think we've pretty much got over it yeah victoria brought in all the old pagan stuff didn't she yeah, yeah. Although I'm very against, yeah there I'm are very still much... people in the uk who don't who don't Yes. Celebrate Christmas. I think yes, Jehovah's yes. Witnesses don't. That's right. They don't. Yeah. And I don't think Plymouth Brothers and people like that. I don't Probably not. No, I wouldn't know about them. But you're right about the JWs. Yes. Mm. So, uh, and uh, I hope that none of you have given your female friends a backpack to wear as a gift. Because watch this. I would not allow my own wife to do that because once she puts it on, it shapes her shoulders her back maybe even her waist and maybe tightens the abaya so that her chest would also be uh, apparent more than if she did not wear the backpack if she wants to wear it she can wear it underneath the abaya put the abaya on top no one can see the difference except this hump on the back but nothing else but to wear it on top of the abaya uh, this is totally inappropriate and Allah knows best. <laughs> I'm just I'm just not going to comment because you know this just this is presumably a family show so I'm just not going to say anything because there's so many words that just beg for a pun or two. But how does one say that? With a- <laughs> I mean, it's, it, 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 there's an obsession with the female form yeah. and figure, um, and it's, it's you know we see it in we do see it in Christianity as well. There's a sort of sexual kind of um, what's the word I want? I can't think of the word. You know, it's, 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 they, they, they they do have a problem with with just normal yeah. not being. Ooh, you must, mustn't uh, so, show anything shapely, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think gay, gay Muslims have a great time because um, you know male gay gays because uh, men are allowed to take their shirts off and do all sorts of things. Yes, wear yes. tight trousers. And, uh, wear a backpack and and the hump on the back doesn't upset anybody. Um. <laughs> no, as long as you're a bit deformed, there's no problem. 
it's, it's when you look like your God intended you to look like. That's the problem. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to be as flat as a board in, in uh, Muslim countries, I'm afraid. And I if would do well. <laughs> when I was young and skinny, now I'm just young. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I always joke. I always say I inherited my dad's um, chest and calves because I'm, 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 I was once told by a, a boyfriend that I have the body of a young young boy. I, I was much slimmer then. So I would be perfectly fine. I, I could probably get away without wearing in the, the whole outfit, especially with my new short haircut. I'm, well, I'd need a beard, though. Monty Python. Yes, yes. I'd need you can get false, false beards of it readily <laughs> available on, online. Yeah. Okay, so I've got some rather sad things here. This particular one, um, I, there's a, I've got a five-minute video. I'm not going to play it because it's too long, but it's about this uh, um, Jewish rabbi in New York who had a horrible encounter. You can see it in, in the news. A couple of weeks ago, I posted it in the news. And he was, he was out in um, Times Square buying a pizza with his daughter and a load of um, Palestinian supporters accosted him. And one of them was a three-year-old who told him that he should kill himself. Now, that's the sort of what's boiling up in, in New York. So I'm not going to spoil the mood by showing that now. But you can see it if you go to the archive and look back a couple of weeks. Well, so I mean, there's been a, a great increase in anti-Semitic. Yes. Um, incidents in the uk as well yes, yes, yes. Of course it, it only applies really in those areas where jews congregate in numbers like yes. manchester and london and leeds and new york yes. yeah. Mm. Yeah. It, it, it must be extremely frightening to see yeah. a three spew hatred like that i i think there's something visceral about that because yes. I, I love kids i love little children and three is about the cutest age you get. So imagine, yeah. imagine the incongruence of yes. having a, a three-year-old spewing that yes. type of hatred. There's something very visceral about that. It tells us how he's been brought up. But the poor yeah. rabbi was saying, this is the only time I've lived in New York for a long, all my life, and I've been a rabbi. I'm quite well known here. That's why they attack me verbally. It's not because... I was wearing a yamuka because I had a hat on. It was cold, and so it was underneath. But they knew who I was, so they were really targeting me. And he said, I felt like I was in Germany in the 1930s. Oh, dear. Yeah. Sure. yeah. On, the, on the subject of anti-Semitism, take a look at this. Poor woman. Oh, dead leaf sheet, who is a hostage, he's 83 years old, and myself, uh, used to uh, wait at... Uh, Eris cross, uh, border crossing and take uh, Palestinians to hospitals in Israel, Ichilov and Tel Um You know, when I was at the, in a safe room and they were shooting and throwing um, grenades uh, for endless amount of weapon, and I thought to myself, um, I was so disappointed because I was, I and many people from our kibbutz uh, were so surprised of the, of the Palestinians and I thought what are they doing this to us who are the biggest supporters for them um, it really broke my heart sitting there hiding thinking that it will be my last minutes maybe and they will kill me and I'm there for several years driving the sick people to to get cancer treatment so how do you, how do you process that <laughs> I realized that they really hate us. They really hate us. They're not. I thought that there were few Hamas who are uh, trying to push the whole community to be, uh, but all of, all the others are really uh, peace-loving people, and all they want is a beautiful house and a garden, and and go swim in the in the on the beach. But no, I realized that the the, the population, the public, the Palestinian public, really hate us. Terrible, isn't it? That's a woman who's been helping 
a good-hearted woman who's been helping the emergency services take people to hospital for treatment. And she's got a safe room. Everybody has to hide. It. They have to have a safe room in their houses. And now she's come to the conclusion that it's, it's actual visceral hatred. And groupthink trumps uh, individual ideas. I mean, that, that for, for decades, for, for many, many years, there have been plenty of Israelis and Palestinians trying to work together, trying to show a different way that they can live together in peace in the future. Um, that's been going on for such a long time. Yeah. Um, but sadly, it's, it's kind of such a small minority. It gets swept over in all these this desperate war that's going on. Yeah, yeah. So we're coming up to the end of my allotted time here, but uh, I, I do want to show you a bit about um, the Muslim, the, the, not the Muslims, the Mormons. I've got some good news because they're no longer a majority in Utah now. That's not good news for them. I mean, you have to see it from their point of view as well. <laughs> but it's back good, in, it's back good in news for ex-Mormons. Yeah, yeah. Back in 2004, <laughs> the... Uh, Mormon Church had the highest membership rate in the United States. But by 2022, people with no religion were 25% of Utah's population. And it's because people are questioning their faith and leaving it behind. <clears throat> so I thought you'd like that. A bit of good news. But there's also an interesting shortish video I've got about, because you know the the US is coming up to the, the next election. So what they're doing, they're looking towards doing their primaries here. They're beginning to campaign. And there is a third party candidate. There's about nine different parties. Only two of them are significant, of course. But this particular one calls himself the Truth Party. And he's uh, he's been questioned by an atheist. So let's see what he says. The question I have that's bigger is what what actual line could you tell an atheist, secular, a satanic vote yep. that would appeal to them that's not a kitschy, conservative catchphrase? Okay, I'll tell you this. The wokeism and all that. No, what we see is a government that is propping up Christianity, that is excusing Christianity's bad actors, that isn't doing anything to fight Christian yeah. nationalism. So here's what I here's what I believe. There may be points in our history where that would be applicable. Respectfully, I don't think that's actually a major threat in this country compared to the threats that I named. But you have Christian I mean, nationalism. But you, you don't feel like that. I don't feel like that's a major threat right January now. January sixth. I feel like wokeism is, is, and, and and transgenderism. Is. But you asked me to say something that will allow to speak to people who are atheists. Because there's an atheist believe. watching this right yeah, now. Yeah, let me let me actually just address your question. You are free to live your life and practice your faith or absence thereof freely without anybody standing in your way, because that's what the First Amendment of the Constitution ensures. And if I have one job as your next president, it is to swear an oath to that Constitution and to keep it. Here's how you'll know that I know what I'm talking about. This was modeled on Thomas Paine's work, Common Sense. People familiar with that? That was actually the leaflets they handed out to start the American Revolution. I'll tell you about one thing about Thomas Paine. He was an atheist, actually. So one of the men who started the American Revolution, most of our founding fathers were Christian. Thomas Jefferson was a theist. He's my favorite founding father, probably my favorite president. I looked up and find the most common cause of him. Less so with Tom and pa Thomas Paine, but I respect the hell out of him. Because he, too, without him, the American Revolution wouldn't have happened. So I recognize that about our history. And I recognize that about our Constitution. And I recognize that even people of diverse faiths in this country were bound together by the ideals enshrined in that constitution. And I will fight to the death for actually reviving those constitutional ideals in this country. And what's in that First Amendment is you may not agree with what I have to say, but I will defend to the very end your right to say it. That's America. That is what makes America great. That is what makes America itself. And so, yes, can we disagree on some questions and still have you support me as your U.S. president? Not as your pastor, but as your president. I think Don Wright. This might help. Yes or no, just to finish. Okay. Do you believe our rights come from God or from you? I believe that 
It our natural rights, secular democracy. our natural rights outside of a government come from God. Our natural rights in the context of a constitutional republic, the rights that we enjoy are the ones enshrined and codified in our constitution. And I recognize the difference between being a president and a minister. Well, there you go. What do you think of that? Up, up, up to the end, it wasn't too bad, I suppose. Yeah. I don't know. What do you, what do you say, Guy? I don't know. I'm, I'm, um, I, yeah, I, 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 I feel as if I can't really focus my mind on it, to be honest. Um, okay, well, let me, let me summarise what, what went on there. He started out that ignoring the Christian bad actors and it being overly ready to excuse threats of Christian fundamental nationalism. And then he moved over to saying, well, I believe in free speech. I defend your right to say anything. But finally, as Tercia pointed out, he claimed that morality comes from his God. Well, I was, to, to be fair, and I have no idea what he means. When he he, he didn't say morality, he said our na natural rights. Yeah. What yeah. the what is what does that even mean? Yeah, uh, yeah I mean, uh, I, I think there was a lot there that was pretty confusing. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, there is there is an old Christian theological idea of the law of nature or the natural yeah. law or something. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. maybe that's that's uh, you know certainly I, I recall it in Catholicism. Yes. Um, yes. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, he he's got all sorts of different things. He's a politician. He's saying all yeah, sorts yeah. of different things to try to appeal to different people. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. But my problem as as um as a not a budding politician as a as a lay man trying to stand for the Green Party in the coming forthcoming general election is that I just haven't got the ability to do all that. You know, yeah. I'll just black blurt out what I think and. Probably you will yes. offend people. <laughs> you, you, will, you will unavoidably offend some people. Yes, yes but, but I also think that you would have probably given a straight answer because you need to be very good at, at besides being a, that being a very politically correct answer and a very mm. well rehearsed, it struck me as mm. very well rehearsed, yeah, yeah, yeah. which immediately makes me a little bit... I'm skeptic about how sincere it is, but so, let's be let, let's be charitable. When you when you have to uh, reconcile rational thinking and living in the real world with the Christian faith, you have to be very good at bending yourself into yes. all sorts of pretzel-like yes. shapes, and yes. that is something that I have never been particularly good at, mm. and. And now I've completely lost the art since I've yeah, been yeah. an atheist for, mm. for 10, yeah. 10 plus years. So, so I think would, you, would you vote for him? No, definitely not. I mean, all this truth stuff, he's all <laughs> over the place. He, he's, 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 you know, you'd expect someone who's who's going on truth to, to, to actually cut the crap and say a few basic yeah, things. You can't Wouldn't do that. that be nice? Yeah, you yeah. Alienate all you. You, you, the people want to hear what they want to hear, and your job yeah. is to try and wrap your speech up in such a way that everybody does hear what they want and doesn't mm. notice what exactly other like are saying. exactly yeah. like the Bible. If yes, I'm not indeed. mistaken, yeah. but I want to ask: Have any of you, have either of you seen um, these? I think it's three episodes on Netflix, um, The Family, where it's based on. It's actually quite good if you can. It's based on a book by a journalist who he didn't, he didn't undercover, but he sort of um, lived with this uh, very uh, hidden group of very uh, powerful politicians in Washington. The leader died in 2016, I think. Uh, Co. His surname is C O E Co. And they, it, it explains very well how the polit the religious right infiltrated uh, the American government. This whole idea yeah. of National Day of Prayer. Yes. 
Douglas or Donald, I don't recall the father's name. Yes. The two sons are still alive and they are very prominent. The family, it's it's worth a watch. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, we'll give it a look. Because yeah. yeah. what, what happened um, in a nutshell is the Christian right were looking for a, an issue which could give them access to people power, to political power, and they came up with abortion. They thought this is the one, they can get a lot of people to, to vote for this because nobody wants to kill babies. They forgot to mention that these are not actually babies. <laughs> They're not even born. So that was their, their twist. Anyway, it's coming up. It's gone, the time that I tried to keep this show to. But I want to, I want to leave it on a light note. So here is the light note. Take a look at this. apparently a praise break that anybody can get up in the middle of a Pentecostal service and start. And we were talking earlier about the whirling dervishes and the om and the attempt to try yeah. and come on, get control of your brain and wipe out every thought. And you know, that's it, isn't it? Well, let me just get my blue suede shoes. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, you know, they're they're doing some good exercising. They're getting their their paces in, you know. Yes. Um, which reminds me, I must do some exercises. Yeah. <laughs> That's well, what I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some dancing now. I'm gonna play that clip and I'm going to you know, the guy with the red shirt. I was really good. I mean and, and those are some nice moves. Well, let's let's I'm, do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's gonna be useful to you. So you'll be able to see it. I'll upload it tonight. And you'll be able to play it as many times as you like on the Free Thought Productions channel. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much for your contributions. Take the rest of the day off. See you Cheers. soon. Bye bye. Then. Bye. Yeah. Uh, was, was, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy?